finishing up here, uh, other linear valves that are used in power plants are knife gates. There's not a lot of them in there, but definitely in the ash handling areas, sometimes in the scrubber areas for larger pipe sizes. Uh, they are used for uh, also for large air handling lines that are used for, uh, for air suction. Uh, they're, they're inexpensive, and, um, and so they've been around a long time, but they, they certainly meet their meet their purpose in the power industry for, uh, for these limited applications. Okay, we've talked about linear valves. Let's go into rotary valves. Uh, they would be typically ball, butterfly, and eccentric discs, or even plug valves. One of the first ones I'm going to show here is quite a unique, a unique uh, valve. This, this looks like a butterfly valve to anyone looking at this, but this actually is what's called a triple eccentric disc. And what I mean by that is that there's actually three offsets to this particular design, and it makes the valve unique, and it makes it be able to be used in some higher pressure applications and have very good shutoff capabilities. Uh, the first offset here is that the shaft itself is not is not equally centered from the front of the back of this valve um, between the flanges. It's actually offset back from the center. The second offset is that the shaft, uh, the vertical shaft of the valve holding the disc is also not centered equally between uh, the opening of the valve. So it's a double offset there. And if you stopped right there, that actually would be what's termed a high performance butterfly valve. They have two offsets and that allows them to work very well in, in uh, majority of applications for 8 inch and larger pipe sizes. However, what makes this valve unique is that there's a third offset and that actually is the seating area. As you can see, this is tapered here to meet a special seat ring and this is uh, machined flat here for that. But what this allows this, this valve to do is almost act like uh, the same thing as a door closing into a door jam. There, there's one of the things that butterfly valves get messed up on is that the disc and the seats usually have to scrape each other, rub against each other to close properly, and when you do that, you get wear. Uh, this design makes it so that for the last, uh, there's no touching of, of, of the disc to the seat except for the last one degree of the, uh, of the actual closing, so you virtually have no wear at the seat area. Um, these valves can be done in, say, very large sizes up to 60 inch. They're very heavy duty. They can be used in, in power applications. We'll talk about that. I mentioned earlier about some of the attributes of a gate valve, flange gate valves that um, maybe not be considered a positive. Well, look, well, they make this thing that actually has gate valve face-to-face -face dimensions. So both 150, 300 pounds, 600 pounds, you can get this valve to actually drop right in where you pull a gate valve out, and you will have much better close-off uh, feature than you, than you have with the gate valve. And the best part is, is that you can put a lot less expensive actuator on it. It's very easy to automate. It's already got a mounting pad on the thing right out of the box. So you can put an actuator, a pneumatic or electric motor operator on here, and you don't have to use the big expensive multi-turn limit torques. You can just use a regular 90 degree operator, which there's a variety of manufacturers that make those for a lot less money than that. So uh, th the point is, for less money, you can get a valve that outperforms a gate valve any day of the week. So keep that in mind as a thought. Some of the applications are, uh, again, we said replace gate valves. Uh, good for water and air. You can actually use them on low-pressure steam up to 900 pounds. Use them on condensate in the plant. Good in the water treatment area. They also uh, can be used uh, on high temperature air because I didn't, if I mentioned or not, these seats and the disc here are actually, everything's metal to metal here. There's no soft seating. So you can go up to high temperatures on this. Also, if you've got an SCR system in there uh, for the ammonia that goes across the, uh, the catalyst that helps clean your flue gas, uh, you can use it for the ammonia. They have special trim you can put in that, that will meet that and also for any chlorine that's used in your plant. Okay, one of the other valves that we're seeing a lot for specialty applications is a completely ceramic lined uh, ball valve. In this case, this particular valve is being used in lime slurry applications in your scrubber area. You can use them for on-off or you can use them for throttling even. They actually have a V port in these balls if you want to order them that way, and you actually can throttle with them. Uh, very good for slurries and abrasive applications, and again, we're seeing more of those because of, of the lime slurries that we're seeing in almost all the plants now. Okay, this is uh, a metal seated, high pressure, high temperature ball valve, unlike a traditional ball valve that you might think about. 
Uh, there's several manufacturers of these out there today. Uh, this, these particular valves are computer designed, and, and what it, the reason that's a plus is that they really know how to optimize the internal designs of these valves now, and they can make them uh, perform at a much higher level than if they just start cutting metal. So you can get these up to 4,500 PSI rated for ANSI rating. Uh, they have very high flow rates, much better than a, a globe valve because uh, it's not full port, but you have a much greater flow uh, capacity than you would through a through a globe valve that has, again, reduced flow. Uh, ease of automation, we talked about that earlier. You can put an actuator on here pretty inexpensively. Uh, this should be a big point for you. They have, these valves have a four-year performance warranty. Uh, unlike the typical forged steel valves or cast steel valves you see right now, you're going to get a one-year warranty on those. These have a four-year performance warranty. The trim in these valves, standard, as a standard offering, is made of Inconel 718, both for the seat and for the ball. Uh, that makes for a very, very high quality, uh, and these, they also put a tungsten carbide coating on these two to even make them even less uh, resistant or more resistant to uh, abrasion. They do meet full ASME B16.34, and one of the best things is that the way these things are designed, they metal lap the seat and the ball, and they have very tight shutoff, not quite class six, but awful close to it, it's, uh, and they do a real good job as a is a, a valve for high pressure steam, uh, for condensate, and we'll talk about those. The um, Okay, let's talk about maybe why uh, I mentioned before about the linear valves. They have a lot of stem leakage issues. Well, the rotary valves have fewer packing leaks, and here's some of the reason why. The position seating versus torque seating. I mentioned before, sometimes you crank down on a, on a gate valve or a glow valve, and you can bend the stem. Well, this isn't that case because there's no cranking down. You just turn the valve to the ball is closed. And it's, it's by a position it is closed. It doesn't have to be squeezed into it with more torque. There's less tearing of the packing because it's a single rotary motion. There's no, the stem is not rising in and out of the packing gland. And also there's more consistent thermal expansion of the stem. As I mentioned before, the, the stem is not rising in and out of the media. Therefore, it's not changing temperatures and not expanding and contracting. Uh, this is a big one because this design here this area right here, this area right there, and that area right there are all uh, guides, bushings, that will keep that stem perfectly aligned so uh, you don't get any, any tilting or, or you know, side loading of that stem. It's very strong and very well guided. And then this is another big one, the live loaded packing. Uh, ball valves like this, they have Belleville washers stacked up here. And as the packing does wear, those, those Belleville washers are like springs and they will keep tension on that packing so you don't have to adjust your uh, packing nuts here uh, very often. To, uh, may, maybe after a year or so you could just check them to see how they're doing. Okay, here's some of the applications for these metal seated ball valves. Uh, these typically are where, where the Y pattern globes are used and T pattern globes. Uh, vents and drains, uh, both the steam drum uh, vents, the seat drains for the main steam stop valves, feed water heaters, economizers, any equipment that needs to be vented or drained during routine maintenance. And I want to add another point here that, that you know, in this day and age with the power plants, I know you guys are, are you've got to bring them up and down on a minute's notice. Uh, there's not a lot of long outages anymore. There's, there's a lot of short outages, sometimes even overnight, sometimes over a weekend. So time is money in this, and, and the faster you can bring a system up and take it down, saves you money, and using a ball valve, these metal-seated high-pressure ball valves in those applications, you can vent quicker and you can drain quicker than going in through a blow valve, so uh, they will help you, and their performance is actually better than those. Okay, you also can use them as, as uh, temperator stop valves uh, in front of a, a de-superheater or in front of a spray valve on your temperators. You also can use them as isolation valves on both sides of a uh, control valve, even even something as large as as a, a very large, um, um, maybe a startup or even a main feed regulator. So you, you can use these as isolation valves on both sides of a control valve, and they work very well. 